Let's go! Freaking Starfield Direct. Oh man, I've been waiting for this. I had to change the whole entire stream just for this one by itself. Let's go! Ooh, I can't wait. This is gonna be awesome. I'm just gonna be quiet though, and I'll comment after. Thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to Bethesda Game Studios. You know, we've been so lucky over the decades to make the kind of games that we love here. And that's thanks to all of you from the Elder Scrolls, the Fallout. We love creating these worlds and playing in them just as much as you do. And throughout all that time, we'd often talk about and dream up the space game. What if we could take that feeling of being who you want to be and exploring a new world, but set it in space? where you weren't really limited in where you could go or what you could do. And that is Starfield. Obviously, we've come a long way since then with the games we've built, our technology, and all of us here in the studio. We've done so much together, but well, we've never tried to make a game like this. Today, you'll get to hear from many on the team and see so much of what we think makes our game special. So let's jump in and take a look. Starfield is our first new universe in over 25 years, but it's still a Bethesda RPG through and through, where you step into a new world and you get that feeling of unlimited possibilities. But this time, it's not just one world. It's over a thousand worlds, because the choice of where to go, it's not ours, it's yours. And it wasn't until now that we had the technology to create it. From the rocks at your feet, to the mountains in the distance, to the people and creatures that live in these worlds. That isn't just a backdrop. That moon is actually there orbiting the planet. Yes, you can visit it too. We realistically simulate the galaxy around you. Our next generation lighting model uses real-time global illumination to light the world based on the type of star and the makeup of the planet's atmosphere. We also have an all-new animation system. And of course, you can play it in third person and you can play it in first person. We love exploration and rewarding it, but you do explore differently in this game, given its scale. That usually involves exploring an area you've landed in. You can collect resources, do a mission, and maybe even stumble upon something unexpected. Love stuff and all of the items allowing you to pick everything up and you can view all that in your data menu this is the hub for everything you're doing from your skills to your ship your missions and your inventory we love to pack a ton of detail in every object from all of your weapons to spacesuits to food we just obsess over the details and food we obsess over food when you're done exploring, you can walk back or fast travel to your ship. We have companions and crew you can take with you. I left Vosco here back at my ship. Welcome back, Captain Howard. 
and he can even say your name. Let's head out. Our mission was to convey the wonder and majesty of space exploration, to evoke the romance of the golden age of early space flight. And we've been referring to this approach as NASA punk. This means a design language where the tech is advanced, yet still looks grounded and relatable. For us, it's, it's that contrast, that's where the visual interest is. Obviously the NASA, which is the rigid, hard function over style, and then punk, which is all about style. You can see that visual style coming through in your ship. Your ship is your home for you and your crew. And like many of the spaces in our game, it has a slightly retro and analog touch, a bit of lo-fi rather than sci-fi, where everything is well used, worn, and lived in. All righty, what's the plan, Captain? This is your star map. It starts with the planet you're currently on. You can see all of its info and resources. You can choose a landing spot or fast travel to known locations. Backing out further, you can view all the planets in the system. Obviously, the game is big, and it's here you can see planets that have key locations, missions, or life on them, versus the many planets that are barren but resource heavy. Zoom out even further to see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here, you can plot a course to ones that are light years away. This uses your ship's grav drive to fold space and jump to these systems. And you will need to upgrade your ship and skills if you want to jump to the most distant ones. But for now, we'll plot a course to the Alpha Centauri system where we can find the city of New Atlantis. New Atlantis, your eyes are guided upwards to just these boundless, vast buildings. It's the biggest city we've ever made, not just in size, but also in the amount of custom art, crowds, and quests. So the main focus when we're designing a city is obviously what supports the story. We try and tell as many small stories as possible. This is a colony war memorial. It's a few moments of gameplay that make the space feel like it's full of real characters that are going about their day-to-day -day lives. It's paralyzing if you really stop and think about it. But it's coffee. It's also where your adventure with Constellation begins. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. By the time you meet them, Constellation is sort of seen as this mythical group. Most people don't even know they exist anymore. They're the last true explorers in the galaxy, and they're trying to find the answers to some of humanity's biggest questions. The artifacts are so different, so alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. The artifact if you could place it on the table here. Oh my God, look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. It's definitely an eclectic cast of characters. You've got Sarah Morgan, the ex-soldier and adventurer, now Constellation's leader. Matteo, the theologian who believes that there's definitely something else out there. Noel, the gifted scientist and Sarah Morgan's protege and Walter, a very successful businessman in the settled systems and Constellation's financier. Anything goes as long as you have the money. There's also Vlad, the ex-pirate, Sam Coe, the former space cowboy, and Barry. You know what I hate about these pirates? Completely resistant to my otherwise irresistible charm. The journey you take with Constellation is just the first of many you'll embark on. The Settled Systems is home to all kinds of different stories, people, and adventures for you to uncover.
The United Colonies is where you'll find New Atlantis, the first major human settlement in space. The people who live here value law, discipline, and the legacy of humanity. They consider themselves the true children of Earth. You ever think of joining up with the Vanguard, help the United Colonies even get your UC citizenship? New Atlantis isn't the only city within the United Colonies. The city of Sidonia on Mars to this day serves as the largest mining facility for the United Colonies. Beyond the United Colonies reach, you might find yourself in a much more wild and independent coalition of star systems. This is Freestar Collective Space. The capital of the Freestar Collective is Aquila City. The Stone Route Inn is an Aquila City fixture. A ranger relies on judgment and intuition to do what's best for the people. Neon started out as a fishing platform, but is now known throughout the cell systems as a pleasure city where almost anything goes. If you've got morality issues, this definitely isn't the job for you. Ryujin is hiring the best and brightest of today for our future tomorrow. Everyone has been chewed up and ground up by Neon. Try not to get yourself killed, all right? Outside the bounds of civilized space, there are still plenty of unclaimed systems to explore, but these areas are also home to the most hostile factions in the galaxy. The great serpent hungers. All heathens shall be made dust in time. A new face. This is the face of a brave runner here to challenge the Red Mile. They think the galaxy is theirs. They are wrong. It belongs to the Crimson Fleet. It always has. In Starfield, we're pushing our cities and settlements further than we ever have before. It's all there, waiting for you. A slice of humanity's future. So, ready to get out there? Throughout the galaxy, there are so many things to see and stories to experience. But the most important story is the one that you tell. I'm the type of person who spends hours in character creation, and I think people are gonna be really excited when they see all of the improvements we've made. One of the biggest overhauls was done through our character generation system. We scanned a wide range of faces from different age groups and ethnicities. And by mixing and matching all that data, we were able to create highly detailed and diverse characters. We use that exact system to create all the characters and NPCs you're going to see in the game. So any character you see almost always is a character you could make yourself. Not hey, come That's on. actually really come cool. On. Okay, take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? You start your character creation journey as though you're cycling through employee records. You'll pick from a lineup of 40 presets, and that'll be your starting point. Your journey from there can be as detailed or as quick as you want it to be. This new system has more to offer than ever before. It's also the simplest character generation system we've ever had. We let the player get as close as possible to make whatever they want. With the various facial morphs you can blend together, the dermesthetic and makeup, blemishes, scars, piercings, teeth settings, it's a lot. But I think it's the most fun to use. Character creation is more than just how you look. This is also where you start to decide who you want to be. That's where backgrounds come in. Backgrounds give you a bit of backstory and start you out with three basic skills. From chef to dusty. You know, the crew still has a betting pool about which restaurant critic you must have crossed to wind up here. What's great about backgrounds is you never know when yours is going to come in handy. You could be in the middle of a fancy restaurant, talking to some guy, and suddenly you learn he needs a beast hunter to help track down a monster. Fine. 
I probably should stick to professionals anyway, given what happened the last time. We're also giving you the option to customize your build even further by letting you pick up to three traits. Traits are completely optional, and they come with their own advantages and disadvantages. You could choose to meet your biggest fan. By Victana, by Victana, by Victana. Is it really, really you? He'll join your crew and he'll give you gifts if you're willing to put up with this constant commentary. I can't believe Isn't I this from Oblivion? Breathing. The fan outside the arena. I've got to have every molecule. My favorite trait is kid stuff. You have sounds to like them. to support your parents, but they're very sweet and it's really fun to go visit them. Honey, we got ourselves a visitor. Oh my God. I came across some hostile zealots in space, but because I had chosen a trait that made me the same religion as them, I was able to get by without any issues. There's another great one that gives you a damage buff when your health is low, but mercenaries will randomly show up and try to kill you. No matter what you choose, there will be plenty of ways for you to tell your story. And if you want to remove a trait, there are ways to do that too. What a view. It's a feast for the eyes. Off we go to another adventure. We'll let you discover that on your own. You can just shoot the guy. Oh, that's awesome. Once you've built the perfect character, that's when your journey can really begin. We took what we loved about skills and perks from our previous games and put them together to create an all new skill system. Each time you level up, you get a skill point, which can be used to unlock or rank up skills. Ranks are unlocked by completing challenges associated with that skill. Challenges become increasingly difficult as you work your way to higher ranks. With our five different skill trees and four ranks per skill, there's a lot to choose from. I like the Xeno Sociology skill because it lets you mind control aliens. Boost pack. Oh, Hell yeah. Mind pack control aliens? aliens? I like maxing out my physical tree so I can get neuro strikes and just punch my way through combat. That one's a lot of fun. Oh, I'm definitely going to be doing some kind of fist-only combat playthrough. I'm very much a stealth player. I'll probably have multiple so, playthroughs in the beginning. Marketing everyone. My favorite part about being stealthy is slowly creeping through vents like you're in a movie and then jumping out and springing on people. Whenever possible, I like to talk my way through situations. Is the area's off limits? Fine, I'll issue you an access card. I'm more of a run and gun player. I like doing that death from above thing where I boost pack over guys and I throw landmines at them. I like blowing stuff up. This this made me so hype. Exploration oh my is a God. key aspect of all our games. In Starfield, there are full star systems with new life, resources, and adventures. Our team worked hard to strike a balance between fun and realism. We studied data from Look at NASA that. and a multitude of other sources to help us make the world feel. There's gonna be so many jaw drop. They better have photo mode. From the way we approach. So many jaw dropping fucking to moments. To place biomes based on the planet's distance from the sun. Once we had created a grounded world, we could start looking at all the things that make that world fun. When you leave a planet and head into space, you'll be navigating asteroid fields, having chance meetings with interesting strangers dogfighting in space and exploring derelict ships maybe i should change my name to it just works tony <laughs> it's all out there 
Looks so good. This has to be computer generated, but it still looks amazing. Because whether it's on the surface of a look at that. Like, look at some of these pictures you could take. Or the a lot of, space, of them, like, I'd like to hang it on my wall. Never know what you'll find. Those are gonna be like the selfies of the future. You know, like every planet you go to, you just take a selfie. Space exploration is possible thanks to your ship. Your ship is almost like having another character or home you can make all your own. I think you'll be blown away by the amount of stuff you can do. You can buy a ship. I'm sure you can find something you like. Customize and upgrade that ship and hire a crew to keep it up and running. And it all starts in spaceports. Every Hell yeah. Spaceport I can't wait to have a badass starship. Purchase, sell, and modify ships. Anything I can help you with? Maybe you start off with a speedy fighter that's perfect for bounty hunting. Then you might round out your ship roster with a hulking space freighter to run cargo missions, or even do a little smuggling. For now, though, we're going to take our starting ship, the Frontier, and make some changes. You can customize and upgrade everything you see here. And you have two ways to do that. You can quickly upgrade individual systems like your weapons or shields. I definitely want to be a bounty hunter smuggler. Enter the shipbuilder mode. That is my plan for my first playthrough. From the systems to the look and layout. And then the backstory is adding a new habitat module like can give Bane you more room from for crew. Star Wars. Adding cowling can change your ship's overall silhouette. But a good version. Grab drive allows for longer distance space jumps. You can even fully customize your paint job to get the exact look you want. The parts you choose to build with don't just affect your ship's stats. They'll also affect what you can do inside your ship. You can have modules for crafting or for storing and displaying your weapons. Starfield's in-game ship manufacturers bring their own look Not and, and to every piece of your ship. From living quarters to cargo holds, mess halls, and control rooms. This kind of reminds me of No Man's Sky. Except with ship customization. Our modified Frontier is a practical ship, but with a little creativity, like more in your depth. ship can look like almost anything you want. It's a bit odd, but one of my favorite ways of customizing ships is um, I make them look like animals. The HMS Platypus, as I called it. You can design them like animals. Tail to it. And we've done spiders. We've done mechs. So it's really what? whatever your imagination is. You can make a damn transformer and vehicle. You can build your Look at that thing. The stars the way you want to. You're probably not the only person who will call your ship home. Holy crap! Ready to lift off when you are, Captain. Engines ready. The Frontier is fueled and ready, Captain. Some of the members of Constellation can join you on your journey. These companions can serve on your crew, and they'll always be there when you travel. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact or this lead runs dry. Each companion comes with their own valuable skills for your ships and outposts, as well as unique quest lines. Eventually, some friendships might blossom into romance. I don't know that I've ever really loved anyone except you. And if you're looking for a little extra help on your ship, you can always hire additional crew at spaceports. Got any room on your ship for someone like me? You'll also meet potential crew members out in the world. Still think there might be a spot for me on your ship? I gotta get off this rock. Assign crew to your ship or outposts, and their unique skills will affect how they run. Oh, you can send them to outposts, too. And just like companions, most crew members can lend a hand in the field. Take Bosco, for instance. These designs are outposts going to be like sim set like um, settlements, Please avoid where you can customize them. You might die. I still wanted to give it almost <laughs> a humanoid personality, so I elongated the limbs. This tends to make him feel more human-like. Oh, you can adjust your mech. It is a shame. Exploration requires so much bloodshed. Using the shipbuilding tools and crew selection features in Starfield, 
you'll be able to build and captain the ship of your dreams. And now, let's take to the sky. This game is gonna be so awesome. Space flight, so you can fly your ship. It's not just like- We're putting you in the cockpit of your very own spaceship and telling you that you can do pretty much anything. And that is really cool for us as developers. Space flight should be exciting and dangerous and you should feel like you're in complete control every step of the way. How do you save in this game? We've extended that sense of control to ship combat. It's not about just hitting your triggers to fire your weapons. It's a complex dance between your piloting skills and our power allocation system. Boosting power to your engines will make your ship faster. Powering up the grab drives will shorten the amount of time it takes before you can make a jump. And moving your power to your weapons and shields means you're ready for a fight. You should always be on your toes because you're not alone out there. Unlocking the targeting control system skill will allow you to zero in on specific subsystems of the ship you target. After destroying an enemy ship, you can loot the remains from your cockpit. You can always turn any ship that engages you into scrap. but you can also take a more personal approach by docking with the enemy vessel and boarding their ship. Oh yeah, that's the way I'm gonna go with it. That way you can take the ship too. Add it to your fleet, right? Once you've taken my control guess. of an enemy ship, it's yours. Yes. Add it to your fleet and retrieve it at any spaceport. Hell yeah. But space is way more than fighting for your life. I can't wait to go like steal like some big ass side, ship. There are plenty right of at the beginning of the game and stops to make on the way to your next adventure. Seems like the best like way to be the dock. Massive star yards. What? Walk the halls, talk to the crew, maybe get talked into buying a whole new ship. A civilian in my star yard. Let's see about getting you a proper ship, one worthy of you. Maybe you'll dock with a gigantic battleship, like the UC Vigilance. No way. Can we take it? Or rub elbows with the galaxy's wealthy elite on a cruise ship fit for the stars. There are plenty of personal encounters to be had as well. You can hail any ship you come across to trade, swap info, or maybe even commit an act of piracy. Let's do this. When I'm playing, I generally go crazy. Um, so I a pirate, go, like, smuggler, um, bounty I'm hunter. Take over ships. I'm gonna board ships. I'm like, this is now mine. I steal That's all an the sandwiches and put them, you know, in my cargo hold that I have specifically for sandwiches. I don't want to play the hero, um, but I want to go out and just start taking things from people as quickly as possible. The sandwich thief. Some strangers <laughs> might be looking for a little human connection. Not gonna lie, that sounds like fun. Hello, stranger. I just finished cooking. I like stealing food. sandwiches. If you want to come on over, just pop on by. Grandma. Some of the best moments are the ones you discover on your own. The thing I love most about Starfield is that it is a Bethesda game through and through. It's really about going to strange new places, meeting interesting people, and getting sidetracked on zany adventures. Then realizing two hours later that you're involved in a completely new story. You're human. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. That DNA is so present here. It's in our random encounters, it's in our handcrafted quests, and it feels so cool to play it and just make your own path in this universe. 
There are over a thousand planets out there just waiting for you to visit. We want you to feel like explorers, breaking ground on new planets, exploring every inch of a mostly untouched galaxy. We want you to feel hopeful. We want you to feel this sense of awe and wonder, and sometimes a little fear. We're giving you a massive playground and a ton of toys and just setting you free. Hell yeah, it's gotta be intense or it wouldn't be fun. You know, like, there's gotta be danger, especially in these space fights. Like, there has to be the option to lose. Not the option, but the ability. Hey everybody, we've shown you so much stuff. Well, we thought we'd just take a little break and show you something a, a little bit different. You know, we put so much detail into our game worlds, and we love the opportunity to bring that into the real world with our collector's editions. And for this game, uh, we've done a watch. It is the Constellation Explorer's Watch. I'm getting that um, watch. This is the watch that you actually get in the game that acts as part I of want your that HUD, watch. where it's the compass and then environmental information. It connects to your phone to give you notifications and other information. And we've also designed this really cool case that it comes with, uh, Eastvon. Yeah, we really took as much care and designed this case as we did to watch. Our attention to detail and the game totally translates to this inspired by the cases that the astronauts used during the Apollo era to bring back samples from the moon. It's got an intricate locking mechanism, authentic, heavy, comes with a constellation patch, NATO strap, and the overall functionality and believability of this as something that would exist. Dude, this thing's gonna world. be a collector's item, universe. for sure. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there, and it even tells the time. We actually have something else. Now that we're part of Xbox, we get to work with the amazing people on the Xbox hardware team, and together we have created this custom limited edition Starfield controller. It's awesome. It is now, you know, our favorite controller. We love this because it's inspired by the actual controls of your spaceship. I'm getting the controller. That, we've created the first ever custom headset with Xbox. No. And this is a perfect pairing with that controller. I like my headset. I like that controller though. Hopefully that controller is not like an elite. That way it doesn't have paddle shifters in the back. You might need it for this game though. we always put so much care into all those little details that breathe life into our worlds. But Starfield isn't just a Bethesda Game Studios world, it's a Bethesda Game Studios galaxy. So why go this big with Starfield? Because we want to give you freedom on a galactic level. The freedom to experience both the exciting planets and the quiet ones. Scanning a planet before you land is a great way to get a sneak peek at the available resources you can use for crafting, building, and customizing. I think what is cool about this whole system that we, we generate the planet itself as a procedural content, but the handcrafted content itself comes as the player explore. Our system builds a planet as the player approaches it. We stitch together a block of terrain, after that, we have the system that adds interested locations for the player to explore, creatures to encounter, or and plants to pick up. It allows us to add that touch of environmental storytelling that the Vesta is known for. Aggressive creatures have been disrupting our experiments. Their habitat isn't far from here. If you could take care of them for us, we would be in your debt. So even if your friends were to visit the same planet that you had, you would have a different story to tell. What? So every single person's planet playthrough is going to be unique? How a guide's going to work?
be like a rough guide or something. I wonder what the official Starfield like book is gonna be. You know, like the guidebook. It's completely up to you how you want to interact with each planet. Whether you want to explore and see what you can find, harvest resources and be on your way, or simply take in the views. With the help of your scanner, you'll chart the uncharted and discover exotic wildlife. If you have the skills, you can even this is definitely out no man's certain creatures and plants. You can build an no man's sky is definitely inspired by this those, or the animals. other way around. You can get experience and rewards for fully surveying planets and fully surveying a whole system. When we were concepting these creatures, we really can only imagine to them as the process it's going to be to get 100% want platinum. We wanted native wildlife, something you've never seen before. When it comes to our exteriors, when the sun moves, all that light is calculated in real time through the atmosphere. Our biggest goal for lighting with Starfield was to make the game feel more filmic, to use lighting and color to really make it feel more cinematic. I mean, this is really turning into like the no man's sky that everyone wanted, but didn't get. After some exploring, you can find a spot to set up a base camp. Outposts can be built almost anywhere on any planet. Hell yeah, custom outposts. And the outposts. modules come in all shapes and sizes, filling all different purposes. You can even live in them. Assign crew and companions to work at your outposts for added bonuses and set up extractors to harvest resources while you're away. Something cool we have this time is we have a new fly cam where you can toggle between on foot building or you can now use a top down isometric camera which helps plan out larger parts of the outpost and placing those larger halves. So that way you can really plan your structures and what the overall feel of your outpost is. And then when you're on your feet, you can really decorate and fine tune things much easier. crafting and research stations in your outposts to utilize any resources you find or already have. Mod your weapons to adapt them to your playstyle. Different weapon sites and scopes, larger magazines, a selection of grips and barrels, different ammunition like explosive rounds. All you stealth flares out there will surely need a suppressor. You can also choose to go hands-on with melee weapons. I think it's always a delicate balance between like what's realistic, what's sim, and what's Hollywood. And I think we sort of err on the side of like what's fun for the player. With Starfield, we've completely overhauled our combat. It's more dynamic, the animations are more fluid. It just feels great. We probably have more mods and more weapons in this game than <laughs> I want to say any other game we've done before. A lot of variety. Oh yeah, exactly what I wanted. Upgraded gear is just one of the many factors to pay attention to when engaging in combat. You may need to switch things up based on your environment. Gravity is different for each planet and boost packs are excellent for getting around and for giving you an edge in combat. 
Sometimes you'll even feel like you're flying. Zero gravity environments pose a different challenge. Firing a ballistic weapon in zero G will actually push you backwards. Energy weapons, on the other hand, offer a more stable shooting experience. We also have mag weapons. These are high-powered electromagnetic induction ballistic arrays. Each barrel has its own targeting laser and can dish out some serious damage. Whether you want to get up close and personal with your own. So basically, fist, your minigun is the mag weapons. weapons like pistols and submachine guns. Maybe you prefer something bigger. Oh, never Stop. mind. They have mini guns too. This is going to be absolutely amazing. This looks so fun. You can fight dinosaurs? What? I wonder if you become a pirate, do bounty hunters come after you once you're like known enough or have a high enough bounty? It's something I always wish they did in Skyrim, but they never did. Like, I know guards and stuff will stop you, but I always wish that, like in Red Dead Redemption 2, if you get a, en enough of a bounty, then you have bounty hunters come looking for you. I wonder if they're going to do that in this. What? What is that? We have powers? Thanks again for being with us today. We are just so grateful that you've taken the time and spent it here. I know there was probably a lot to take in. There's a lot to the game, even more than we could show here. You know, as we play it, we're always sharing these unique and special moments that only a game like this can bring. When I think about what makes it special, it really is the people here. This game is a reflection of the incredible and passionate team that made it. All of them putting something special of themselves into it. So let's hear some of their favorite moments. I love the way that our final combination of all the new tech has come together to create some of the most beautiful sunsets and sunrises we've ever had in any of our games. I love the creatures, the exploration, every biome is different. The word that comes to mind is vast. I like to use our photo mode to take rock star photos. I just love that constant feel of Photo mode confirmed, and, finally. Wow, I can't yes. believe that there's more here. I'm most excited about our outpost building systems. My favorite part is every time you step out on a planet, it's a unique experience. You spent all this time building your ship, and you see it on the landing pad. These things are gigantic. It's the kind of thing that you just can't get anywhere else. There's something about seeing a tower over in the distance and going, I know the gravity's low here. I think I can make that jump. My favorite part is biomes, spaceships, audio design, planets, the day-night cycle. Those details matter to me. Diplomacy, exploration, freedom, the ending, basketball, obviously. I love the robot so much. The incredible amount Your of Your favorite part's the ending? Sniper rifles, come on. Lever come on. Action, rocket launcher, brain sprout. I love, but... Oh, what is that thing? Uh, oh, that's right, Ben. The thing that I enjoy most about the game is the freedom to be who you want to be, do what you want to do. It's what you've come to expect from a Bethesda title, but on a much bigger scale. This looks so good. On behalf of all of us, we can't wait for you to play Starfield and make your own special moments. I can't wait to play Starfield. Holy crap, man. I am pre-ordering this game as soon as I can. That collector's edition, because I want that watch. Watch and controller? Right up my alley. 45 minutes. Wow, this is a long, in-depth Starfield. 
Oh, and the release date. 9-6-23. Hell yeah. Oh, here we go. Pre-order now. Constellation pack. Here we go. Constellation edition. That is what's up. Oh. I am so happy. Dude, this is going to be awesome. All these games look so good. Look at this Fable. So many games that I love are coming out this year. Or with within the next two years. Like, what? Fable? I've played the heck out of both the Fable games. And granted, they're a little kiddie, but like all the Fable games. I love that you could be good or evil. And like, there was different endings for that. I just can't, I'm, I can only imagine what the new fable is going to be like. But Star, oh, this is that Outlaw, right? Star Wars Outlaw, that looks like a pretty good game too. I'm a big Star Wars fan, so I'm excited for that. This Clockwork game looks pretty good. The City Skylines, that looks pretty good. Phantom Liberty looks amazing. This game, I don't know about that one. Other oh, Star Wars. 76 is getting an update to go to Atlantic City. Sea of Thieves. Payday, oh yeah, Payday 3, I forgot about Payday 3. Immortals. Even Avowed got a not a release date but saying that it's coming out next year at some point oh, so many good games coming up all right everyone well i hope you enjoyed that preview of the starfield direct wow what an amazing game that's gonna be i am like super excited to see it I really am now I just kind of like want to go back and look at some stuff let's go like yeah like 40 like look at some of the stuff in this This gameplay looks really good, really crisp. I like that you can jump and see how he had like the delayed landing. That's because the gravity is low in this planet. Oh, wow. Okay. We do love stuff and all of the items allowing you to pick everything up and you can view all that in your data menu. I love that you can grab all this, this stuff. This is the hub for everything Look you're doing. Look at that doing, hub, too. Skills, to your ship, your missions, you got your skill your tree, inventory. missions, inventory, you and your ship. A ton of detail in every object. You can upgrade From and all customize your all your weapons. To spacesuits. All your spacesuits. To food. Mix and mash. Obsess over the details and food. You can you eat. I wonder food. if they're going to have a survival mode where you when have to eat and drink. You can walk back or fast travel to your ship. You can walk or we fast travel. companions and crew you can take with you. I left Vasco here back at my ship. Welcome back, Captain Howard. And he can even say your name. Ooh, I wonder that's how funny. many names he can say. Look at that ship. And that's like a base ship, you know? They said that one's good for bounty hunting. Our mission was to convey the wonder and majesty of space exploration, to evoke the romance of the golden age of early space flight. And we've been referring to this approach as NASA punk. This means a design language where the tech is advanced, yet still looks And they confirmed a photo mode, which, well, I mean, seemed pretty obvious, but... That's where the visual interest is. Obviously the NASA, which is the rigid, hard function over style. Wow. And then punk, which is all about style. You can see that visual style Look at that. through in your ship. 
get out of your chair, your you, and your ship's going to be fully customizable the too. Spaces in our game. It has a they were even saying they made some of them look like animals, touch. just like because they could. There was a transformer one. There was so many different types. They made a spider one, a mech one. Alrighty, what's the plan, Captain? You can romance your, this is your star map. people it in the world. The planet you're currently on. You can see all of its info and resources. You can choose a landing spot or fast travel. This really to gives locations. me like No Man's Sky vibes. Out further, you can view all but just the, planets in the, the next level, Obviously, you know, like having RPG big, and people and talking you to you and planets that have key going on missions, missions or having life dialogue versus the many planets that are barren, hidden but people heavy. and quests and Zoom out all types of stuff to see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here, you can plot a course to ones that are light years away. This uses your ship's grav drive to fold space and jump to these systems. See the grav you drive. Need to upgrade your ship and skills that you need to upgrade to definitely gives me ones. no man sky. Now, I mean, we'll it makes sense though. To the Alpha Centauri system, That's like the way you would do it, right? Oh, you Atlantis. can't go this far yet. You gotta upgrade your drive. You need a better ship. It makes, I mean, it's like makes sense. You can only go so far until you upgrade your engines and then you can go farther. But I wonder if you can steal a ship in the beginning of the game. This is something I'm really wondering. Can you steal a ship in the beginning of the game? Like a freighter or something. Just something that like has the drive you want. And just, you know, dock with it and then take it over. Even though you don't have the crew yet. To be able to actually run the ship. Like New Atlantis, your eyes are guided upwards. Look at Atlantis to too. Boundless, vast I love that thing. It's the biggest city we've ever made, not just in size, but also in the. I can't wait to explore the city. Just even just this one, like. I feel like there's so going to be a lot of verticality. Like you can go up elevators and like in certain story. rooms, and there's not going to be a lot of locked rooms. Is possible. This is a or maybe there will be. I don't know. I hope there isn't. There's a few moments of gameplay that make the space feel like it's full of real characters that are going about their day-to-day -day lives. It's paralyzing if you really stop and think about it. Buddy, it's coffee. It's also where your adventure with Constellation begins. Here's the watch. I want one. Like, look at this room. Welcome it's a nice room. But I feel like they have a really good cast of characters that are going to be like really diverse and friendly or mean, but like engaging. That's what matters the most, is is it engaging? Does it keep your focus on it? Do you want to know more of the story or is it boring? That's going to be the make or break with this game, I think. And so far it seems with this mysterious artifact, if you could place it on the table. Seems like a really good... It almost reminds me of The Expanse. If anyone knows the uh, story of The Expanse, the artifact... Uh, what is it? The new molecule? You've got Sarah Morgan, the ex-soldier and adventurer, now Constellation's leader. And the character creation. Literally every single face on every single character. They said if you want, you could make your character look like that person. And That's Walter, how in-depth they went with the character creation the on this one. That you could spend hours making yourself if you wanted. Or, you, wanted. you know, Vlad, Keanu Reeves, or the Joker, Sam or whoever you want. Space Cowboy and you know what I hate about these pirates? I wonder if you can make, make him an alien, though. I don't think so. Charm. Seems like you can only be a human. The journey you take with Constellation is just the first of many you'll embark on. Also, are you going to find... Is home to all what they didn't show in this, though, is people, are you going to find intelligent aliens? Like, they show these different creatures and stuff, but are there going to be intelligent aliens? Like, is one of them. Is that an intelligent one, but they're just evil? They don't tell you. The United Colonies is where you'll find New Atlantis, the first major human settlement in space. The people who live here... ...ground up by Neon. Try not to get yourself killed, all Ooh. right? Looks like there's gonna be a murder mysteries. Outside the bounds of civilized space, there are still plenty of unclaimed systems to explore. But unclaimed? these are also home to the most hostile factions in the galaxy. Oh, hell yeah. The great serpent hungers. So many different factions. Shall be made dust in time. 
all the different factions and it looks like with the background stories in the beginning that you can actually choose some of the different religions or they think the galaxy is theirs or like backgrounds that'll get you like you could be a beast hunter or part of the new religion or a bounty hunter i didn't see that many different backgrounds but enough for you and a slice of different backgrounds actually own. give you it seemed like different backgrounds actually give you like like a one up kind of in certain situations like you'll run into somebody and if you have that certain background he might have a mission for you but if you don't have that background then i don't know if he has the mission for you or maybe there's a different way to get the mission from him instead of just Right off the bat, maybe you have to actually talk in depth with them to get the mission from them. Because it seems like a lot of stuff, you'd have to do multiple, multiple playthroughs to actually talk to everyone and get every mission from everyone. I wonder how that's going to work out. Or if there's going to be like ways around it. Like, oh, well, he needs a beast hunter. And you're not a beast hunter. But if you put a beast hunter in your party, then he'll that like that question will come up so maybe you have to like rotate who you take out for companions you know, like if you talk to someone he's like oh i'm looking for this and you're not and you don't have that with you maybe you have to change your allies and companions because i they said there's ways to change not your background but like your what do they say the con uh not concepts but like traits attributes like you know, they showed one that was you get a damage boost when you're at low health, but the negative of that is bounty hunters are always trying to, are like on the lookout for you. You're a wanted man. So like, or maybe like you have better vision, but things up close look blurry. Like, uh, who knows? I don't know. They only showed one, but they did show a whole list. They only really went in depth with the with the um the low love the low health damage boost so ready to get out there i can't wait to see juice head's video on this you know he's making one right now the galaxy there are so many things going to in depth and stories to experience but the most important story is the one that you tell i can't I'm imagine the mods that are come out gonna come up with this but says that better not mess this up and make it really hard to mod this game when they see all of the improvements we've made one of the biggest overhauls was done through our character generation system. We scanned a wide range of faces from different See, this is what I was talking about right here. Cities. And by mixing and matching all that data, we were able to create highly detailed and diverse characters. I think he they said he scanned like to a thousand different NPCs faces or something like that. So any character you of see, different ethnicities and diversity so that you can make anything you want, any person you want, male, female. Hey, come on. Non-binary, whatever okay. you want. Take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical. Damage. I wonder if you can make a transgender character. Still out. You know who you are. Like you they identify as a woman, but they still have an Adam's apple. Any bells? Any of this? Or the opposite? Familiar? You start your character creation journey as though you're cycling through employee records. You'll pick from a lineup of forty presets, and that'll be your starting point. See, it's all just a starting point, though. Your He's, journey from he said you can spend hours in here. As quick as you want it to be. This new system has more to offer than ever before. It's also the simplest character generation system we've ever had. We let the player get as close as possible to make whatever they want. With the various facial morphs you can blend together, the dermesthetic and makeup, blemishes, scars, piercings, teeth settings. It's a lot but I think it's the most fun to use. I really have to think of who I'm going to make my character be. Because I want him to be like a... Start to decide who you want to be. A ban... That's like a bounty coming. hunter... A bounty hunter... Backgrounds give smuggler... You a story ...and start you out with three basic skills. Pirate. From chef to dusty. 
You know, the crew still has a betting pool about which restaurant could but be still the is honorable up here. somewhat What's great about backgrounds is you never know when yours like is no killing ahead. kids you could be in the middle I will of kidnap restaurant. people Talk I wonder if you can kidnap suddenly you learn he needs a beast hunter like what are the crimes you can commit Fine. on like a regular basis that people will react to anyway like could Even you go on one of those time. we're also giving you the I want to know so they said in the in the in like when you're in your ship that you can come across many different any spaceship you come across you can talk to them even if they're bounty hunters or pirates you can still try to have a conversation and try to like negotiate with them i wonder if you come across one of those rich pleasure cruise ships if you can like storm it and then take everyone hostage and then ransom them back to their families if you want to play as like a pirate you know, like, that seems like it should be an option. Like, that would be really cool if that was, like, a way to make money. You know, like, but then even that could go wrong because it could be the wrong, you know, like, you, you kidnap the wrong person. So now his family sent a group of mercenaries to go get him back because they're really rich. And there's, like, 20 of them on, like, a crazy-ass, like militech ship you know like in cyberpunk so like they're overpowered but if you can take them all out and they have to pay the ransom then you get a lot of money for it so it's kind of worth it i wonder the possibilities are there i wonder if that if that's in the game though if that's just a pipe dream to customize your build even further by letting you pick up to three traits. Here we go. This is what I was talking about right here, the traits. And they come with their own advantages and disadvantages. You could choose to meet your biggest fan. By Victana, by Victana, by is it really, really you? Hold on a second. Tell me that guy is not the same voice from Oblivion when you have the super fan outside of the arena, right? Tell me that's not the guy. It really, not him, but join your crew and I'll give you gifts this guy. If you're willing to put up with this constant crazy, him. I get to Tell me that is not the same guy. It even kind of looks like him. It really does even kind of look like him. It's definitely the same voice or very similar. It's kind of similar to the same voice that uh, the Joker in Oblivion too. the Jester that's in the Dark Brotherhood. That voice sounds very, very sim familiar. Stand near you, breathing the same air. I've got to have every molecule. My favorite trait is kid stuff. You have to pay some credits to support your parents, but they're very sweet and it's really fun to go visit them. Honey, we got ourselves a visitor. Oh my God. I came across some hostile You have to support your parents. Space, Shouldn't your parents I support you? Trait that made me the same religion as them. I was able to get by without any issues. See, there it is right there. He has a trait that made them the same religion. So they let him go instead of fighting. So there's definitely more ways than one to get through every single situation. Whether or not you're in your ship, whether or not you're talking to people in person. It seems like there's multiple ways, like multiple different directions every encounter could go. Instead of just like, fight, don't fight, talk, charisma. You know, like It seems like it's a lot more in depth than just that maybe you try to sneak by them or maybe like they don't want to listen to whatever you're saying it doesn't matter what you say they're fighting so you just jetpack away you know you just boost away from them and then take them out or i wonder if you can like get some kind of like stealth on your ship that like if you're near asteroids you could land on one and then like chameleon to it i don't know these are all just things i'm thinking of but uh, someone could make a mod either way to make that happen. Because that seems really cool and like something that would actually happen. Except for sensors, I don't know. I feel like sensors would be able to pick up the heat from your ship. Like, how are you going to get rid of the heat? But it looks like you can boost, you can speed, uh, balance. I don't know what uh, MSL is. Oh, lasers. Why? I wonder what that is. MSL, I don't know what that is main sensor laser laser apparatus system boost 
There's another a great one that gives you a damage buff when your health is low. This is the one. Uh, mercenaries will randomly show up and try to kill you. Oh, it's called Wanted. No matter what you choose, there will be plenty of ways for you. Hold to on, so that's confirmed. If you have a bounty on you, then mercenaries will show up to try to kill you and take you in. I wonder if they can arrest you, though, and you can go to jail like you could in Skyrim. Like, is there an intergalactic jail that maybe you have to bust people out of or, or you get into? Do they have, like, a jail simulator? So many questions. Tell your story. And if you want to remove a trait, there are ways to do that, too. What a view. It's a feast for the eyes. Off we go. To another yeah, no more adventure. fan. Bye. <laughs> we'll let you discover that on your own. <laughs> if you don't want the adoring fan, you can just shoot him in the back of the head. Wow. I would just chain him to a rock and say, leave him on an island deserted. Why is it always going to be death? We'll let you figure out how to shoot someone in the back of the head by yourself. Once you've built the perfect character, that's when your journey can really begin. We took what we loved about skills and perks from our previous All right. games. I feel like this has gone on for a long, a long time. Let's look at I don't Let's look at some other stuff. Here we go. This is the pot I wanted to see right now. Look at these backgrounds, man. It's going to be so immersive. Wait till this game comes out in VR, too. Aspect of all our games. In Starfield, there are full star systems with new life, resources, and adventures. Is that a sniper rifle? See, like, all of these look like animal aliens, though. And Not really intelligent. Study data from NASA like, you could have a conversation with. To help us make the world feel believable. Like, I wonder if you come out the way we approach almost planet. like in Star Trek where, like, there's the Borg or, like, some kind of group of robot civilization planet. Like, um, what is it? Stargate. The, uh, who are those people? The Replicators. Like, similar to that. Like, I wonder if there's a planet of Replicators. Not Replicators, but just, you know, cyborg intelligence. AI intelligence. But... A whole world of them and they're all robots and they live in a whole society together running around and doing all that stuff and then maybe there's like a cyborg so they're half alien half robot because they're there's so many possibilities i hope that there's intelligent aliens in this game that it's not just other humans that you come across and all the aliens are like animal type so like they don't talk to you they just want to attack you or stay away. One of the two. I hope that there's a third option there where they're intelligent. You might get some missions from them. But you have to find them. Because they're not just like, hey, we're aliens we're right here. They don't actually tell you that though. And in this, in this, they don't actually show any. Besides the animal versions. And then some really terrifying like spider monkey style aliens that look kind of crazy. I'm just hoping that there really is some kind of alien that you in like you know interact with, kind of like um, No Man's Sky, where like there's tons of different kinds of aliens, and they're all they only you know they all talk to each other, but because they got they proceeded, they progressed to a certain point in their evolution that they're able to do space travel. Oh, well, we don't really have too many, lo too much longer to find out. What three months? July, August, September, and it's the beginning of September too. September sixth. So today's what? Today is the eleventh. So June to July, July to August, August to September. Three months away. Wow. Less than three months. To the way we place. As long as it doesn't get delayed. Knock on wood. from the sun. Once we had created a grounded world, we could start looking at all the things that make that world fun. See, like, those when are really cool, but can you talk space, to them? Can you talk to any of them? You'll be if anyone knows, please heroes. let me know in the comments. Having chance meetings with interesting strangers, dogfighting in space, and exploring derelict ships.
it's all out there. You never know what you'll find. I am so hyped for this. All different ships coming in. Look at all those different ships. Those are just three Space different exploration types. Exploration is possible thanks to your ship. Your ship is almost like this is a really cool part or home. You can make all your own. I think you'll be blown away by the amount of stuff you can do. You can buy a ship. I'm sure you can find something you like. Customize and upgrade that ship and hire a crew to keep it up and running. And it all starts in spaceports. Every spaceport has a ship technician where you can purchase, sell, and modify ships. Anything I can help you with? Maybe you start off with a speedy fighter that's perfect for bounty hunting. Then you might round out your ship roster with a hulking space freighter to run cargo missions, or even do a little smuggling. For now though, we're going to take our starting ship, the Frontier, and make some changes. You can customize and upgrade everything you see here. And you have two ways to do that. You can quickly upgrade individual systems like your weapons or shields, or you can deep dive and enter the ship builder mode. Here you can change anything from the systems to the look and layout. Adding a new habitat module can give you more room for crew. Adding cowling can change your ship's overall silhouette. An improved grab drive allows for longer distance space jumps. You can even fully customize your paint job to get the exact look you want. The parts you choose to build with don't just affect your ship's stats. They'll also affect what you can do inside your ship. You can have modules for crafting or for storing and displaying your weapons. Starfield's in-game ship manufacturers bring their own look and feel to every piece of your ship. From living quarters to cargo holds, mess halls, and control rooms. I mean, literally the amount of customization sounds insane. Like there's going to be people out there with some crazy, awesome, cool looking ships out there. And it's all, you know, like maybe they want, instead of having, instead of having the, the, um, what the hell do you call it? The, the bridge or the captain's deck, the, the command center. Instead of having it in the front, how about you have it on top? That way you get like a bird's eye view. Maybe you have your ship like top down instead of like elongated. Instead of, you know, instead of like long, maybe you have it height. Like it's high, like high to low. Like it's vertically designed instead of horizontally designed. Or maybe it's wide. Like it's tall and wide instead of long. And then you have like your, the core of the ship is where like, that's how to even like explain it. Like maybe, you know, like, can you make a version that looks like the Borg ship? Like it's a cube. Can you, you know, can you like uh, ugh, the customization? Just seems nuts. Can you make it like unorthodox? Where like you can't even see out of the front because the cockpit is in the back. Like on top of the uh, on top of where the engines are. So it's really loud in there. <laughs> but they have to they put some noise deadening underneath it so you can't hear it. But it's like back hair. That way if you take a front end collision, you're fine. You'll be alright. And there's like Maybe they make this ship like a salamander where like the tail, like if smug, imagine like bounty hunters or pirates are like attacking you and you have like some crap cargo in the back and then you're like, all they want is my cargo. So you just drop that one in the back that has like gar rubbish in it, like your trash and then you drop it though, but they stop following you because they're like, oh, we not like like you wait for them to shoot you and then you seem like maybe they knocked it off the ship so then they stop to go grab that and it gives you time to get away call it the salamander technique you know like who knows that seems doable though if they programmed it
that seems cool though. You know, like just some kind of diversion. Or like, I I know they're not going to make this, but almost like the Enterprise where you could, uh, the Enterprise is one big ship, but if they need to, they can put it in, a, make it into the disc and then the bottom and then fly them separately, but together so they can like do a different attack maneuver. I wonder if they're going to have those options too. Like, could you have one of your crew hands or one of your companions fly the ship like the bottom half while you fly the top half? And then attack them separately. And then once the fight's over, rejoin. That way you can put more guns on the ship, but have them actually being used at the same time. All questions I'd like to know. And we'll find out in three months. Our modified Frontier is a practical ship. But with a little creativity, your ship can look like... But yeah, this is what I was talking about right here. Want. It's a bit odd, but one of my favorite ways of customizing ships is... Um, I make them look like animals. The HMS Platypus, as I called it. Where it had a, like a giant tail to it. And we've done spiders... We've done mechs. This mech one looks really cool. See what I'm saying? You have the, your own transformer. Your imagination is. Look at that thing. And while you can build your home among that thing the is stars so cool. the way you want to, you're probably not the only person who will call your ship home. I doubt you can make two cockpits though. But maybe. Ready to lift off when maybe someone makes a mod to. that you can. Engines ready. Literally, the mod ideas for this game sound endless. Captain. Because now you're not like Some stuck and followed or join you on your journey or Skyrim can serve on your crew and they'll you have many many travel. worlds that you could create together until we like someone could make a mod like their whole the world star. like a whole new world with cities and all types of shit valuable skills for your ships and outposts as well as unique quest lines eventually some friendships might blossom into romance see look at that you can have relationships loved anyone except you is someone going to make an immersive and adult mod ship, for this? You can always hire additional crew at spaceports. Anyone is seducible. Ship for someone like me? Take them all to the bedroom. You'll also meet potential crew members out in the world. Still think there might be a spot for me on your ship? I gotta get off this rock. I always thought they should make lovemaking a skill skills will affect that you get better run. at as you perform. And just like companions, most crew members can lend a hand in the field. Take Bosco, for instance. He's designed like a seducer perk the, or something. Six of a NASA machine. Please avoid getting shot. You might die. I still wanted to give it almost a humanoid personality. So I, I got a feeling the robots rooms. in this game, or oh, like your companion, feel, that guy, you know, that like companion is specifically, is, is going to have a lot of funny little dialogue quirks so to him. Shit. Using the ship building tools and crew selection features in Starfield. You'll be able to build and captain okay. the ship of Here we go. Every step of the way. We've extended that sense of control to ship combat. It's not about just This is going to be awesome. To fire your weapons. It's a complex dance between your piloting skills and our power allocation system. Hell yeah, you're going to be able to give yourself Boosting more power engine power or more faster. laser power and shields. But you gotta balance it until your sh I'm, I'm assuming until your ship gets like upgraded enough that like all your systems are very high. But even then, you might want to take some from the engines and like boost your lasers so that you can one shot things. Like you know, near the not near the end game, but near like mid game. Because you're not alone out there. Crimson Fleet Hunt. See, like, if you want, can you join the Crimson Fleet? Unlocking the targeting control system skill will allow you to zero This is going to be really cool, because you can, you basically like a Marauder. Target. And you can steal their ship. You can scrap it, or you can take it and then sell. I wonder if you can sell the ship, too. Like, if you steal enough ships and you have too many in your inventory. After destroying an enemy ship, you can loot the remains from your cockpit. You can always turn any ship that engages you into scrap. 
but you could also take a more personal approach. This is the way I'd like to do it. Vessel and boarding their ship. Board them. But how many ships can you board? Like, how big of a ship can you board? You know, like, can you board a freighter and then just take it over? That's what I really want to know. Once you've taken control of an enemy ship, it's yours. Add it to your fleet and retrieve it at any spaceport. See, add it to your fleet. But space is way more than fighting for your life. Just like when you're planet side, there are plenty of sights to see and stops to make on the way to your next adventure. Like these massive star yards. Is that like a shipping dock? Walk the hull. The ships? Talk to the crew. Maybe get talked into buying a whole new ship. A civilian in my star yard. Let's see about getting you a proper ship. One worthy of you. Maybe you'll dock with a gigantic battleship. See, that's what I'm talking about right there, the battleship. Like, if you take over the main one, do the other ones just, like, run? Or do they try to attack the main ship? On a cruise ship or are you not stars. able to take over a battleship because it's just like, you're going to die? There are plenty the second you go to dock when you're not supposed well. to? Or you'd you have to dock. Any ship you come across to I guess if you try to... If, if you... I'm, I'm guessing, but if you try to dock with a battleship you'd have to like be under the guise of like trying to talk to them or like trade with them or something and then they might have like stipulations like no guns no you know and if they if they detect one they just blow your ship up just to make it so you can't steal that battleship right from the get-go seems legit i don't know we're gonna find out Anyways, that's where we're going to end this. I hope you all enjoyed this. Oh, I am so excited for this. Everyone, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments what the best feature you want in Starfield to be. Like, what feature do you hope is in there that they didn't even talk about? Or that they did talk about? Anything. I'd just like to know what you what y'all opinions are too. I read all the comments, so let me know in the comments. Later, everyone. See you on the next episode. Bye.